Bank and do my dual studies here in a bachelor's mm -hmm. degree. Um, and yeah, been a crypto head ever since I fell in love with Bitcoin back in uh, October 2016. Uh, fell down <laughs> the rabbit hole quite quite hard. Um, <laughs> never regret it ever since. You and me both. Yeah, it, 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 it's way too addictive. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, so I will continue. Hi, I'm Nick. <laughs> Um, just to show you my face, I'm the one who's not gonna talk this much today because I'm a little bit sick. Oh. Um, and I got infected by Max with cryptos um, in the August 2016 <laughs> and can't eat a step um, reading about it and um, telling everyone about it. And um, when Max told me that he's planning an ICO, I fell in love with this project especially with um, the thing which is our long-term vision and um, to have a decentralized network network for power and now I'm here I'm the token manager and so I'm trying to get some um, crypto exchanges to list us but my car is a bit later so for now on we need some guys like Nico building the community and um, like <laughs> to hopefully make amazing infographics and stuff and yeah. <laughs> Hope so. with you no <laughs> <laughs> oh by the way um <laughs> Nettie, are you recording <laughs> oh yeah you are great okay yeah <laughs> Uh, so I will go on. Um, I'm Thomas. Um, I'm yeah. I'm from Weingarten as Netty, and I also get infected by Max with cryptos <laughs> in the summer. Uh, yeah, there was a party, and it was, and then he started up with Bitcoin, and we all discussed about and yeah. So and later, um, then Netty. Max's arguments were too good. <laughs> Sorry? Max arguments were too good. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. And then um, Nettie told me about this project and yeah, first I was a little bit skeptical, but um, then yeah, I really loved it. And yeah, um, now I'm into it. And yeah, I do with Nettie or I will assist him with the token management and yeah. That's my part. Uh, currently, I'm working at the local bank, uh, Sparkasse, and yeah. That's, nice nice that's to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> Thanks. And so, and why, why don't you tell them now what you do? So, I'm like a UI UX designer. Do you know what is it, UI UX? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So. Um, that's what I'm currently do. I, I don't understand so much in all this uh, coins and cryptocurrency like uh, kind of stuff like Nico, but uh, it's like the project you're doing are, sound really interesting. So uh, I will be happy if you will explain to me like better because uh, from really I didn't ex like understand so much. And that's it. I will be happy like to help you guys and to get inside this project and like uh, to do my best um, i'm from israel by the way if uh, <laughs> you didn't know <laughs> and that's it i think nice very cool um and so what are you currently doing in like graphic design so what is your main job it's like i'm designing uh, mostly websites and applications like mobile devices and like, yeah. And I'm making logos. I'm working in a company now in Israel. That's like uh, doing all this stuff. So I'm like uh, designing for the interface of the digital, um, how you call it? Like for mobile and desktop and that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, that's actually interesting. Something I didn't think about because uh, you are a UE designer, so we are going. We are going to have a wallet or some kind of an interface that we do need to design at some point. So 
nice. so yeah. something to consider. Yeah, <laughs> sounds really cool. Um, yeah, definitely. Nice. Um, and so, how long have you been in this field? Uh, what have you been? Um, like in this company, I'm um, for like uh, eight months already. And before that, I was working one year. A little bit different, not exactly in UI UX, but I'm I'm making also like uh, side projects, like with some startup company from here that I'm working with, and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Cool. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't know. Did Nico tell you yet what what we need or or what we're what we're? He told me about the infographics, and I was reading like the doc. And uh, yeah, I understand the global idea, but I didn't understand exactly what needs to be in the infographics, like what kind of details and like uh, what to write. What what do you want to uh, present in this? And so it's about the infographic and it told me also about some video you want to make, like to then understand what kind of video yet or uh, <laughs> what to show in this video, but uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the video I was talking about is, is like uh, this one minute like introduction video on what, what, the, what is the NX Solar and what, what do we do. Like basically just a one pager in a, in one minute video, maybe some infographics, maybe some I don't know. Like, but it, it should uh, like every, literally every project has this. We should have it as well because video is the it's a very good media to transfer some information for busy people. They, some people don't even take the time to read a one pager, so that might be something mm -hmm. that people will miss out if they don't see the video. So that's yeah. something uh, I would like to see us us having. And uh, of course, the one pager is now a priority because we need to show that to uh, possible investors and uh, mm -hmm. anybody who's basically interested in like, you know, yourself, uh, you said that and uh, Matt in the other call said that it's not very clear uh, from the one pa pager what we do. So those infographics uh, should yeah. clarify yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, and the, for the infographics, there are two, or, or yeah, two infographics that we need for the white paper. Uh, plus a timeline, so a, a roadmap, uh, with just yeah, mm -hmm. some basic stuff. Um, the first infographic will be of the token function, and this will be especially about the staking of the token, so this whole sparking up process. Mm -hmm. um, it works basically like this. Uh, you have a token, the ENX token, and inherently mm -hmm. the, this ENX token does not give you any voting rights. Um, yeah. It only gives you dividends. However, you have the opportunity to voluntarily stake your tokens in a process which Miko coined sparking up, which I, which I really like. Um, and once you have staked or sparked your tokens, uh, you are now receiving, or, a di uh, or, or you now have voting power and voting rights on stuff that the project needs deciding on, uh, which we can get into later. Um, mm -hmm. The longer you actually keep those tokens locked up, or, or, or maybe j j just to say as a prefix, um, once you have sparked the token, they are illiquid, so you cannot move them, um, and you cannot send them anywhere, and you cannot sell them for Euro or Bitcoin or something else. Um, but then uh, once you've staked them, the longer you hold on to them, the more voting power you will get, uh, kind of in a uh, S-shaped curve, so initially, the, the amount will stay steady. Let's say you have on day one, you have a, a factor, a multiplicator of your voting rights by one. On day two, you have 1.05, then 1.06, 1.07, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say after one week, you reach the voting power of 1.5. Um, and then after, I don't know, five weeks, you finally get to the full voting power, which is let's say two, uh, multiplier two. Uh, of course, arbitrary numbers, but that's pretty much how it works, this kind of S-shaped curve of increasing voting power. Mm -hmm. You can, however, oh, oh, any questions so far? Uh, no, I hope I understand it better. Just, you, you okay. can keep explaining, I will like, try to understand. Okay, um, and 
so your tokens are locked up and they increase in voting power as time goes on. That's, that's like the basics. Yeah. Um, however, you always have the possibility to start fizzling down, which basically means uh, you make your locked up tokens, you unlock them. Hold on, Max, I have something to add. Yeah. Uh, not, not just voting power, but also uh, increasing dividends. So you will actually earn more the longer you, the longer you stay because that's your reward for participating. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good point. And again, uh, the, the dividend multiplier is in this S-shaped curve as well. Um, so slow increase initially, then exponentially more uh, increase in dividends and voting power over time. And then we have a long tail of, uh, for, for the last couple of days, weeks, months, uh, where the voting power and dividends don't increase as much. So typical S-shaped curve. Um, yeah, okay, but you can always start to fizzle down, which just means you take the locked up tokens and you request that they will become liquid again so that you can move them, that you can transfer them to another owner or that you can eventually sell them if you want to. However, the tokens do not become 100% liquid on day one. Uh, so let's say on day one, you want to have your tokens liquid and you start this fizzling down project, uh, a fizzling down process. This process takes in total two weeks, and every day you get one fourteenth of your total amounts of tokens that you staked. So let's say you have uh, 1,400 coins that you put in this uh, locked contract, then every day you will get 100 coins liquid that you can start moving. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then after two weeks, 14 days, 100% of your tokens will be liquid and you can do whatever you want with them. Okay. Uh, so, it's like you're buying these coins, you're investing in these coins. And then it's like it's getting locked. You can't touch them for how many days? These numbers, you said it's like real numbers or just give me like an example? Um, some are real, some have still to be figured out. Um, okay. So uh, number one, if you, you can buy the token anytime and then you have the token in a liquid form, which you can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. And this, this whole process of staking or sparking um, it's arbitrary. So if you want to participate more in the project, if you want to have voting rights, if you want to decide on what's going on in this project, mm -hmm. you can do so. However, you have to lock up your funds. But mm -hmm. it, as a compensation for this, you and for your for the extra work that you have to put in to stay up to date and stuff like that, um, you get extra dividends as well. So okay. normal normal token holders that have just invested in it and have the funds liquid, they get dividends as well, no voting power. But if you decide, okay, I actually want to be more involved, I want to know what's up and I, I want to contribute, you can do so, you have to lock up your funds, you mm -hmm. get voting power and more dividends as a compensation. Okay, okay, I understand it now. Okay. Um, no, but, but, but ask if, if, you, if there's anything unclear uh, and, and if, we can... uh, I'm sure I will understand it like uh, better when I will start working on it and like getting into the details and everything. But mm -hmm. uh, wh what kind of like what numbers do you want to present or what's the process you want to present like how to so I can like think about how to visualize it um, like in the best way so people will understand. Mm -hmm. I'm still um, at like so 100 percent in there <laughs> because I'm not like a, I don't know much about this whole uh, um, like I said but uh, <laughs> I can try to clarify okay um, uh, so basically what we want to do what our goal is with this model is that we want to incentivize we want to uh, encourage people to buy and hold our token because um, for two reasons, two main, two main reasons. The value of the token will go up because there will be less on the open market. And the other reason is 
that uh, we want people to actually participate. We want people to make the project their own. So that inspires even more loyalty and uh, more free advertising because people are going to be talking about the project. Hey, I'm in this, you know, I got this voting rights, I get more dividends. We want people to become like patrons and, and uh, promoters uh, from their own free will, of course. We don't, uh, I mean, we kind of want to discourage people for just speculating and buying the, the token and selling and manipulating the market. We want to discourage that, but it's allowed totally, of course, because it's a free world. And but, uh, we want to use something called game theory. And uh, that means that it's always more beneficial for the token holder to, uh, to hold the token than to sell it. I, I don't so, see you. So good. Nico? I think we just lost him. Yeah. Oh, we lost Nico. Maybe okay. we don't blew him away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, His phone just can... froze. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what kind of projects like uh, you can invest in? You don't understand so much. Okay, um, so there is kind of like this motherboard, which or, or the mothership, which is called uh, Enex. And mm -hmm. if you invest in this mother company or, or like motherboard or organization, then we take the funds that you've invested and you, that you've given us, and we build photovoltaic power plants with this. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, all the funds you send will be invested directly into photovoltaic power plants. Um, okay. The electricity that is produced by those plants will be bought from us by the consumers and the revenue we receive uh, will number one use for repayment of the of the initial investment and the uh, like like labor and um, contracts and stuff like that um, and the leftover profits will be distributed to the token holders. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, all token holders will get dividend rights, and the sparked tokens uh, will get extra dividend rights. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that, so, like, like th that entire process will be laid out in the second infographic as well. So we can talk later a bit more in detail. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, do you do you have any more questions for the first for this whole voting mechanism? Uh, what happened? Matthew just started sharing the screen. So maybe something like like this, um, where we can say, okay, we have the short term and the long term investors. Um, tell me what you think about it. It just came to my mind. Um, so um, get dividends and um, profit from uh well what's what's called from the secondary market secondary market and long-term investors um pro, um profit by staking the token walking up no, i would Okay, I, I wouldn't say uh, profit by staking token, but rather extra dividends. So maybe something like this. Okay. Do you know how I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, can you share this, uh, what you was writing later or? Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. So the first one we want to like uh, show like the two ways of like uh, long, uh, how you call it, long term investing and short term investing. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
So we want to show this what you presented now, right? The two ways of investing. Um, I think so. In the, first, in the first infographic, yeah? That was my thought, what we could do in the first infographic. So the two ways um, of investing in Annex. Um, the first way is for short-term speculators. And the second um, for the long-term investors. So um, we could say something long-term investors and you can do this whole um, voting power part um, much longer. So with voting, you can vote which PV panels in the pipeline you want to be built. Um, and um, take team decisions. So something like, okay, we um, make higher dividends or um, voting power, something like this. Um, yes, so that's that's my thought at least. Uh, I want to hear the rest of the team. <laughs> Thomas, Max, Nico, what do you think about something like this for the first infographic? Yeah, I like this one. Um, maybe we um, yeah we're focus um, yeah we're focusing on the long term investors. Am I right? Yeah, um, because we want, as Nico said, um, that the people hold our tokens, that they uh, can vote on uh, the decisions. And yeah, I like this. Um, if, uh, if we do this, um, like, yeah, show the people how we, yeah, how different, um, or no, how can I say, um, the different options of investing, yeah, and um, show them that they're, really um, more po uh, positive things if they hold their tokens, if they particip participate, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Yeah, guys, I'm back. I ran out of battery because it was so cold outside. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> So your your phone did literally freeze. freeze. Yeah, it did. I had like ten percent <laughs> battery, but it's like in five minutes it was gone. <laughs> okay. So so just to to sum up the the staking mechanism, um, every token holder has some inherent dividend rights. Mm -hmm. However, no, no inherent voting power. You can lock up your tokens in a process called sparking up, which locks up your tokens immediately once you've done the, the transaction. Um, and as soon as you uh, did the, the locking up, your both voting powers and dividend rights increase mm -hmm. in a S-shaped curve um, until a, a maximum point. And then you can always uh, liquidate your tokens. However, this entire liquidation process will take two weeks. Um, so from the day that you say, okay, now I want to have my tokens liquid, till the day that all your tokens are being liquidated is 14 days. Mm -hmm. And on each day, you get one fourteenth of the token. So it's, it's linearly. Mm -hmm. Was it clear? Uh, this process also in the first infographic or Come just the, the process that you were talking about now we want to show this too in the infographic the first one yeah i or think that is a, or only like the two ways of investing like the short terms and the long terms yeah, that, that is a good question. So what, what I just described is the mechanism um, that we use for sparking up and fizzling down. And the, but it only says how it works. Um, of course, there are reasons why we're doing this. And the reasons that the background for this is that we want to incentivize um, long-term holding, especially for the people that have voting rights. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to, uh, for the people that have voting rights, we want to make sure that they, number one, get compensated. And number two, that they are uh, incentivized on doing the, the good thing um, because they're in this for the long term. Um, and also we have a price stabilization effect 
um, no short-term dumping of the tokens. And uh, what else? Did I miss anything? What? Mm. Oh. Well, um, I think it's um, important to show both ways of investing because um, not the or so that nobody gets confused only if we show the long term investment. Um, yeah, so yeah, it, he wants to buy the tokens, but uh in he wants to speculate um but we say uh, uh but and then he understands yeah he has to hold these tokens and yeah just to show him the way that there's another alternative to do <laughs> yeah we, we can maybe make it clear that or uh yeah, you, yeah. your design that there are so there are ways of participating for both just passive investors yeah. who just just want to speculate, uh, nothing bad there, it's, it's really important. Um, oh, I want some coffee as well, Nico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got good service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we, uh, we, we should make it clear that there, you can invest passively simply by holding the token but you can also become a more active member of the community um, and get more involved. Um, mm -hmm. This of course uh, means that you have to stay educated, um, but it also means that you get uh, paid more and you have more to mm -hmm. say uh, on what, what's going on the project. So I think it's important okay. that we separate those two things. Um, but mm -hmm. I think more important is that we, that we just showcase how it works because it is mm -hmm. rather complicated and a, like a bit yeah. bizarre. Um, so just to make sure that we can like visualize it intuitively on, on how this whole process works. That would be yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the goal here. And I, I think we should start it from the, like, how does one, somebody who gets interested or, or hears about our project, how does he get involved? And the way to get involved would be probably to find out uh, about a token sale. So, so then the first step should be participating in a token sale. Uh, buying the token and then go into uh, what are the options after that after you acquired your tokens what are your options then and then we want to probably want to de uh, stress the voluntary nature uh, um, you know nature of the whole project that uh, we want you to want to participate and if you don't want to we're okay with that as well but we want you to um, feel welcomed and uh, I don't know how to put that but yeah, like we want them to feel like they are joining a community and uh, it would be great if we could somehow show that welcoming attitude in that um, infographic as well. What do you guys think? Yeah, great, great points. Really like that. I agree, yes. <laughs> Uh, the the quest the question is though how, how exactly do we visualize that? Uh, any ideas? Um. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. How do we visualize uh, with you visualize that? Or what did you ask? Uh, Max, yeah, I'm muted now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, the, I think that's that's why Hen is here uh, to help us figure out how to test that yeah. because well, uh, she's a visual person and I've seen her work. It's pretty great, and she can make a, a complex idea simple. I think, and yeah, this is the, the most important part of this call is to try to figure out exactly how we plan to do that. So, what is the what will be the content? Like we all the core team, we all know how the token works and how sparking up and fizzling down works, but how to make sure that anybody who sees that infographic also knows what, what, what's going on. So we need to find something tangible and something easy to understand from everyday life to use in that infographic, maybe some big uh, imagery of like, like, you know, we're talking about the, uh, sparking up and fizzling down for a reason. 
so the logical thing would be using like uh, sparks. Maybe there's some sparks flying when uh, when maybe uh, uh, you know like the spark came from the electron idea. So maybe like uh, inserting a core into something and then sparks uh, fly out, something like that to signify that now it's locked up, but it's not lost, or, or rather that it's working for you. So I'm thinking kind of like using a, a like a tube of fuel or, or an atom or something like that, you know, to signify the sparks and you, you put it in and then it changes color and then uh, the sparks fly out and then you generate something clearly from it. Mm -hmm. And then the um, fizzling down part will be when it returns to normal. So the sparks uh, fizzle down and then uh, you can remove safely uh, in pieces the, the fuel or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh Really great points. Could you explain again how you would visualize fizzling down? I didn't quite get that. Right. So uh, let's say that you have, um, okay, let's think like um, in, in movies, like everybody's seen those movies where there's like this uh, plutonium tube uh, that you put in and then there's like this hissing sound and it goes in and it locks in. Something like that. That, that would be like understandable for people that you are you're putting your tokens to work and you're using them as fuel. So then fizzling down should be an opposite of, of it. But in addition, you can only take a portion out. And I think that that's uh, probably the tricky part here to visualize how you put it in as whole. But when you want to take it out, you can only take small pieces of it. So uh, I don't have a clear answer on that. That's something we should figure out. Yeah, good point. And and definitely it, it should be in this uh, like um, electricity style, energy style. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, that's that's the project. <laughs> and also we should clarify that there are two ways. Um, yeah, short term invest and long term invest. Um, yeah, I do, but I have no idea how to um, Visualize that maybe with two ways or something. The the short terms uh, ends here and the long term goes further. I don't know. <laughs> you know, about the visualizing, um, I will think about it like uh, more deeply, like later, and I will think like the best uh, the best way to present it. I just wanna know like what do you wanna present, and then like like the content I need to use. And I will think about like the most uh, simple and clear way to present it. And then, of course, I will share with you. So the first one I understand. And I would like to talk about like the second infographic about the project it was. Mm -hmm. Or you don't agree with me? You want to like discuss about the visualizing? Because it's kind of hard for me like to think like from a minute to minute, like what kind of stuff I want to show and how to do it. So. I can share with you this, like all this idea I have like uh, maybe later on this week or something. I think it's probably a good idea if you if you could work on something and then uh, we go from there because it's much easier for us. Uh, yeah. Understand your point then. Yeah, definitely, and and I mean, we'll work exactly how how you want to work, uh, and if 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 you want to like do it that way, no problem at all. Okay, so <laughs> okay. second second infographic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, the, the first one was just uh, how do how do you get the voting rights and and how does that whole thing work? And the second infographic will be more general. What does the business do? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, so oh. as I said, there. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, maybe just here we can talk a little bit about the project in general. How does that work? Um, mm -hmm. So we want to provide photovoltaic energy, PV planets, for um, a community or a group of people. Um, and this means that we can... Uh, I don't know, uh, wait, no, wait, let, let me start. So there, there's a community who wants to have greener and cheaper electricity. Mm -hmm. um, and they currently get their electricity from the main grid and the main energy provider. However, that is mm -hmm. like 
cumbersome, uh, it's expensive, and, and like all, all that bad stuff. But the community itself, and with the community, I mean like some private households and maybe one or two businesses. Um, and they do not have the funds necessary to build the PV plant uh, because it's rather expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and now what we were thinking is those, like the core community, the energy consumers that actually want to use the electricity, they can get a first initial funding round together um, where let's say if they need in total 1 million euros to build the PV plant, um, but they themselves can only come up with, let's say 300,000 euros. Mm -hmm. um, but they can provide, of course, those 300 euros and in exchange, they get the tokens and then mm -hmm. they can take it and stuff like that. Um, however, we're still missing 700,000 euros and those funds will be collected on the international capital markets with this whole mm -hmm. token sale. Okay. Um, so there's basically like the first funding round is just for the community so they can like participate and give as much as they can or want to. The mm -hmm. second round is then on the international markets where they where, where we just raise as much money as is needed. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, then once we have the funds collected, uh, let's say we have raised a million euros, we then mm -hmm. use this money to uh, buy photovoltaic power plants mm -hmm. and to install them. And this, of course, costs time, effort, and labor, and you know we have yeah. to pay for and we use the funds um, and yeah and the building of the project will be done by a company by you know public company um, mm -hmm. and who this company will be can actually be voted on by the token holders but more more than that later um, okay and then once we have the uh, the PV plant operational it produces mm -hmm. electricity and now the consumers, the private households and the businesses can buy the electricity mm -hmm. from the company uh, or from the organization. Yeah. And with those revenues that now come in like every week, every month, um, yeah. we number one pay back, uh, you know, the labor and, and stuff like that. And with the net profit that the company has or the organization will be either um, reinvested in further projects. So that is route number one. We reinvest the projects, so we refinance ourselves. Or number two, and, and it's uh, both things will happen, we issue a dividend to all the token holders. So let's say if we do 100,000 euros of profit to profit uh, in mm -hmm. the first month, uh, we reinvest 40,000 euros mm -hmm. and we issue dividends worth 60,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And then each token holder gets a portion of those 60,000 dividends. Okay. Okay. And this could be something that the community can also vote on, like the percentage of how much to reinvest in new projects uh, um, against uh, how much dividends will be, will be distributed. But the point is that anybody who owns the plant will own it through the tokens. So by, by buying and holding tokens, you will end up uh, owning a portion of the NX network. And by NX network, I mean a series of um, these plants that we call nodes. So mm -hmm. every time we build a plant, it becomes a node in the network. And we plan to, in the future, connect that, those nodes as a bigger network. And whoever has one token, uh, will own that much of the whole network and each project that we we make a new project uh, It will have a new budget and that many new tokens are generated So every time new tokens come to the market come to existence in the first place There has to be a project ready to receive the funding. So it's always backed up by power functioning power plants and uh, energy production so this is something important to reflect in the infographic, in my opinion, because a big fear and big doubt in the uh, crypto and ICO space is that the token is not maybe backed up with much or it's pure speculation. And mm -hmm. uh, we are not a speculative asset, even though, of course, some spe speculation will occur because it will be traded on the markets. 
However, the game theory part would uh, um, incentivize and make it much better for token holders to actually participate and then, you know, make the right, right choice. Okay. So, um, to sum up, uh, there's a, how, how it kicks off is there's a need. There's a need for electricity. Let's say that uh, you and me, we live in the same uh, village and we both have a house. And we are mm -hmm. interested in solar energy. We want to help the environment. We ha want to have mm -hmm. energy independence. We want to be our own masters. We don't want to be dependent on this power company that can raise the prices or, you know, be yeah. pretty much on their mercy. So you want to be your own boss and you want to own it and you want to gener uh, generate wealth for yourself. The problem with this is normally for people like you, you and me alone is the funding, where to get the money. We normally don't have the... Um, you know how much how much ever it costs to build a plant like let's say a uh, hundred thousand two hundred thousand might be a yeah. lot of money for us to generate so then we could uh, approach NX Solar which is a company who helps with funding funding this and uh, if our project is it seems plausible to them to to us in this case to NX Solar then NX Solar would kick up an ICO a crowdfunding round kind of like kickstart think of it like a kickstarter but instead of uh, you know, just moving money on PayPal, you actually participate in an ICO and you pay in uh, Bitcoin or Ether or whatever uh, crypto we are deciding on. And then in exchange, you will get ownership of the network. So anybody who participates will own an equal part of their, uh, in, uh, their investment. And so then you and me could go to NX and, and present the project and present our funds in the ICO. So we would take part in the ICO as well. And then from the pipeline for uh, the, the community would jump in also, they say, okay, there's a new project, you know, I'm, I want to increase my position on NX, so I'm gonna buy. And then mm -hmm. once the, the pipeline, the project in the pipeline is topped up, we execute. We can execute the project and then we can direct the funding to the next one if there's more interest. If there's more, there might be a very possible scenario where there's a line of investors who want to participate in our ICO, but there's no project. That's a scaling issue, but that's, uh, let's not go into that right now. The point is uh, how, how it starts is uh, you have a need and then you have a supplier, which is, uh, which is in this case, is uh, and NX works kind of like a hub uh, of connecting these people with need, these communities to people who are interested in uh, speculating with a token or investing in uh, energy, but they maybe don't want to build their own project. So NX will connect those two parties. And, uh, and, and, and I guess that's, that's what should be re reflected in the infographic. What, was that clear at all? Yeah, I have a question. Um, it's like, it's gonna work by itself. Like, uh... I didn't understand how it's going to be like, okay, people investing in the coins, but how, like how the projects, like um, who knows when there is a new project, like something, someone is managing the whole, uh, yes. Um, so <laughs> or it works by itself. I, Yes, so we as the NX team um, will do something like a catalog the, the, called the pipeline um, where we um, share some further projects you can invest to. And, and from this catalog, from the pipeline, the people can decide, okay, which project is preferred now and how much will we fund next round and which projects will be built with this money. Okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Any any further questions? Uh, um, I don't know how it works. Like, uh, not in Israel, but in here, like in Israel, we have this one company that gives electricity, and like, no one can say like, uh, oh, I want to build my own like uh, <laughs> a farm with uh, some uh, plants there to to make uh, like electricity by myself. Like, it's not like illegal here, so it's not legal here. I mean. So yeah, how that's that's a really good point and the energy market unfortunately is, is filled with like state bureaucracy and monopolies and stuff like that yeah. which is not a good thing at all but the mm -hmm. beautiful thing is that we can circumvent this quite quite well 
Um, because as soon as you have your photovoltaic plant on your rooftop, it's yours and you can do whatever you want with that. And now you're sovereign from like the, the force monopoly. Um, I, to be honest, I don't know how the legal uh, stuff is in Israel. But for example, in Germany, um, you can actually build your own PV yeah. plant and y use it. You have to mm -hmm. register it. Um, and again, that depends on several countries. Um, and it, it's, it's different for each country. Okay. Um, we will focus the initial projects on Central Europe, um, mm -hmm. simply because um, we have done business in, in those areas already. Yeah. And we know how it works. And we know what we have to do. And we know what's legal and what's not. Okay. Um, so, th yeah, but, but in, in general, we can do this anywhere we want. Um, yeah. But yes, we always have to check that we have all the permits and that we don't mm. do anything illegal. Um, but again, okay. we, we, we don't need the state or any force monopoly uh, to do that. Uh, we can do it ourselves, yeah. which and, is beautiful. And my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. it's really nice. Right. So this is, this is to em emphasize, emphasize the role of the NX team here. This is like, this is like our bread and butter. We will be the hub. So uh, maybe in the infographic, there's a hub of, uh, of sorts, which is NX uh, team or company or uh, community, what we want to call it. It's still unclear, but NX is in the middle. And then NX will connect uh, the, the people who want uh, mm -hmm. this energy, the investors who want to invest in this energy, the companies who want to build these plants, and NX is in the middle. To, and also the government regulation, that's one, one uh, th a branch also of the, of the hub. So the hub will connect. Uh, we, uh, of course, once we start doing this more and more, we generate a lot of valuable knowledge, which we then pass on to the token holders because we are the ones who are going to manage the, the pipeline. So we actually take the a big part of the hassle and problem solving from, from the, like if you and me would like to, start to kick off a project I have you know there's a lot of things like most people wouldn't even know where to begin to find mm -hmm. out if this is legal how can we do this what kind of regulation you know where do we get the best stuff like I hope we're not gonna get ripped off well if you contact NX then that all that legwork is done by the NX team well a lot of it or the NX community and where we want us to participate so we, we would uh, pride ourselves in getting the most efficient best technology available at any given moment uh, so that's kind of like what we bring to the table and why, why people should go with our token. So because we, we will be like the kind of like the trusted party, which, uh, which you know, some, some people might say that it's a, a certain degree of centralization, which it is. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it's done, done in good, good faith. It's done in, uh, with open books. Anybody can join. Anybody can contribute. So I don't see it as, a, I don't see as centralization it's as itself as a big demon. It's just uh, a lot of times uh, it can re uh, create a lot of problems, but we are, we are aiming to promote decentralizations by being, uh, well, centralized ourselves, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and just to advance on this, um, yes, we, we are a central like point um, where we coordinate, but the organization itself is very decentralized. Um, I, I really like the, t the term um, open source company, which I think we definitely are. Um, we are j just a bunch of people wanting to work on this. We're all in here voluntarily. Um, and I think that's very powerful. And anyone can join the team if he wants to. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, just as you now, Han, uh, you, you don't have to be here. You, you actually want to, I, I hope. Uh, otherwise, maybe yeah, sure. it's just cursing you. <laughs> <He's forcing> me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so yes, yes, we, we are like a central group uh, that is organizing this whole thing. Um, but number one, we don't have all the tokens, which means we don't have all the voting power. Um, this means we cannot decide 100% ourselves what, what projects will be done. Um, mm -hmm. And further, uh, if there is, uh, or yeah, no, wait, what, what do I want to say? I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> It's happening sometimes. <laughs> yeah, this, this is basically the, how, our, how our calls always are. We just uh, chat around. And it's pretty awesome. Like we, we oftentimes we have these like four hour calls and nobody even knows that the time is flying <laughs> because it's like we're having fun here. Like we are trying to create, create something. And yeah, that's, that's an excellent point Max made about the, what we're trying to do here. Like even though we are kind of like centralized, 
in the future, we might not be. Like, we might actually have many branches of NX that are totally managed by totally different community members, and we have the core team has nothing to do with it. We mm-hmm. want it so that each one of us can walk away at any time without hurting, without killing the project. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, we don't want to be have a leader who then, if, if decides to go to another project, the whole uh, whole project collapses. That would be a very terrible model. So, so we're kind of going for like a starfish kind of uh, approach. So then, if one of us leaves or one of one of the legs for some reason is uh, is cut off or dies, then it won't matter. The starfish will grow another leg, and uh, or another starfish uh, that comes about if the, if the starfish is split, like a fork, for example. So there will be like these different things and and all based on voluntary action and and uh, this good idea. So like. Uh, yeah, a very good point from Max. Uh, it's uh, it's a voluntary motion, more like. And while it starts uh, to a, uh, with a cent- uh, degree of centralization, the goal here is uh, to be very much decentralized and, and uh, sovereign. Mm-hmm. And and maybe just just to get back to the projects. Um, so there are two different types of projects that we can do. Um, okay. Number. Number one is a, uh, so I'm talking about the solar projects. Um, number one is a large scale farm uh, that is like mm-hmm. bigger than roughly 750 kilowatt hours peak. Um, and those farms are so big that they are usually built on a open field and then yeah. connected to the, to the grid. And yeah. a farm like this is big enough to sustain several households and businesses and, and stuff like that. So this mm-hmm. is option number one. Um, in this option, we can do uh, something that is called a smart grid so that the uh, distribution from the PV plant, the big plant, to the households and businesses is managed in a, in a smart way. And um, if, if, if like person A or household A needs currently a lot of electricity, they get more electricity. And if household B is currently on vacation and doesn't need electricity, they don't mm-hmm. get any. Um, and potentially we can we can do some like trading platforms and, and stuff like that in the small mm-hmm. community. That's something we're looking into. Um, mm-hmm. Still a bit future music, but it's doable. Um, yeah, so okay, this is the first type of project, kind of like this decentralized mm-hmm. smart grid with uh, several uh, consumers of the electricity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's mo- mo- very often a rather large power plant. Um, second option is r- a rooftop retrofitting. This means you are a private household or a business or a logistics company that has a large rooftop. Um, mm-hmm. And we put the solar power, uh, the solar panels on top of your rooftop. Mm-hmm. Um, this doesn't hurt the rooftop. It's it's really you can remove it anytime without any damages. Um, so it's, it's quite nice. Um, and then the electricity you so the owner of the house consumes nearly a hundred percent of the electricity. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so there is no inter household trading or or no siphoning yeah. off of the electricity and stuff like that in this mm-hmm. approach. Um, yeah, so those are the two basic functions. And the bad thing with sun energy is that the sun is not always shining. Uh, this means, especially like at night at like eight o'clock, if, if you need a lot of electricity and you know, you're watching TV, you're probably cooking, mm-hmm. um, that's energy intensive. And the sun is not shining, um, which means we can either work with um, storage solutions, so batteries, um, mm-hmm. where at 12 o'clock at noon when the sun is shining and you're at work so you don't need any electricity, it's actually yeah. um, uh, saving the electricity in the battery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you you use up that battery. That would be approach number one. Um, however, mm-hmm. batteries are a bit expensive, uh, so that, that's, a, that's a negative. Um, second thing that we can do, um, and we do that, for example, in, in Central Europe all the time, is if we produce more ele- energy that we actually need or that the household needs, the excess energy is fed into the main grid um, and sold to the main utility company. Um, and then, for example, the electricity goes to your neighbor um, or someone else who needs the um, electricity. Again, we can do this over... Uh, just selling the electricity to the uh, utility and feeding it into the main grid and just seeing it go. 
this is approach number one. And of course, with more experience and, and in the future, we can do all this uh, smart grid trading and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, basically excess el electricity can be just sent up to the main grid. And then in the evening when you need a lot of energy and the sun is not shining, you can actually buy electricity from the main grid, um, which is quite nice. Uh, so even though the sun is not always shining uh, with this approach, you, you still always have electricity. And just when the sun is shining, you use your own. And when the sun is not shining, you use someone else's energy. I didn't understand um, the second option. Uh, like so, the like there is the one like you charge the battery and then you use it like later in the day and the second one yeah. if you use like in a day like more than you should like if you use more electricity than you uh, like so, if you Okay, um, so currently I, I, I assume you do, do not have a photovoltaic, or let's just assume that you don't have a photovoltaic power plant on your roof. Um, this, <laughs> means, <laughs> this means you just go to a utility company and you, you mm -hmm. talked about in, uh, there's only one in Israel, you, you have to go to this one, and then you yeah. buy electricity from this company. Exactly. Um, what, what the company does, it, it produces energy somewhere uh, in, in a power plant, and then it ships the energy to you via yeah. the main grid, uh, just a, mm -hmm. a huge grid where energy can be transfer transferred. This is uh, the, like, uh, the, the farm, I don't know how to call it, how did you call it? Like the place you, you put the plant? The power plant. Yeah, so yeah. this is like, it's called like main grid? Uh, the, the main grid are the huge wires that, um, that just ah, transfer okay, okay. the energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So just electric wires, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and so currently, if you need a lot of electricity, you buy yeah. a lot of electricity. And if you yeah. don't need as much electricity, you just don't buy any. Um, so yeah. that's how your household currently functions. And okay. with, with, with our approach, it's exactly the same. If you need a lot mm -hmm. of energy, you buy it. If you don't need it, you don't buy it. However, yeah. Now you have like your own power generator on your rooftop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and which means if the sun is shining and if you need a lot of energy, you actually mm -hmm. don't have to go to the utility and buy it. You just use yeah. your own. Yeah. And this means you, you have an instant decrease in your, uh, in your electricity bill just from mm -hmm. uh, the amount of electricity you have to buy because now you don't have to buy as much. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even better, if the sun is shining and you produce energy, but you do not need it, you can sell it to the main okay. utility. Yeah. Um, and this means not only do you save on your energy bill, you actually make a profit for the time when you produce energy and you don't need it. Yeah. Um, and and that's, why it's, that's why this approach is quite nice. It, it's, it relieves yeah. your energy costs drastically. Yeah. Um, and I mean, in the approach that I just laid out, we still have the central utility which is not optimal. We can still improve upon that. Um, mm -hmm. for, and, and here, for example, if, if there's a large community with several households, mm -hmm. now you don't have to sell the electricity to the central utility, but you just send it to your neighbor and your neighbor yeah. pays you. And if nice. the neighbor produces okay. more and, and he doesn't need I all that electricity. That. Yeah. Exactly, precisely, yeah. yeah. And so okay. this way we just cut out the middleman entirely and it's just peer-to-peer -peer, peer energy trading, yeah. which of course is, it's more efficient, it's more reliable, um, it's not centralized, you own your yeah. own stuff, uh, no one can coerce you to like price increases and stuff like that. It's, it's much better, basically. Yeah. But again, that's nothing new. Um, we're not the first one to do that. Um, but I mean, we, we just use the technology. It's, it's still yeah. really good technology. And yeah. we, just, we just do it in this decentralized fashion. Mm hmm Nice. Okay. Sounds awesome. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It has infected already. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's, that's our plan, to infect uh, as many people with this idea as possible. <laughs> it's like virus yeah. and takes over the world. Nice. Okay. So, I understand the second one. Let's go to the third one. 
I think the third one is the easy one because it's simply the milestone. Like, it's like a timeline of a, yes. how the business is going to grow. Right. So you know what a milestone is? It's uh, like on the highway, you have these uh, in, in the US and the high, on the side of the highway, highway you have these uh, stone pillars that give you the distance in miles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are called milestones. So whenever you pass a milestone, well, then you know that you're where you are. So mm -hmm. I was thinking personally for the, uh, for the visualization to use, an, use actual milestones, which is like, uh, hold on. Which well, should give a simple and clean look. Can't find the one I'm looking for. Yeah, something like, okay, I'm going to share the screen. So, um, yeah, something like this or, or this, like a small pyramid on top. And these will be the stops on the, on the way on, on, on our highway to, uh, hopefully not hell, but <laughs> some better place to the end of the project. And, uh, th th this is something that I haven't really given a thought a lot. Like what is the end of the timeline? Like, I think we should probably start the, I think it's um, quite popular right now to start, start the milestones way before uh, the ICO project to give a kind of like an idea where, where the project is coming from. Uh, so like, you know, uh, this company are, we're working with is uh, founded and this idea is conceived and, um, you know, and the ICO is... Uh, then the core group is started and, and then move on to uh, the moment now and then over to the future. Uh, what, what I haven't thought about is uh, what is the end here? Like what would be like, we don't want there to be like an end necessarily because we are, uh, we want be to be open. Like yeah. A... Yeah. Open-ended. Yeah. yeah. So we want to, want, want to just uh, be able to expand on that later, yeah. like add milestones mm -hmm. because we don't know all of those yet. We have no idea. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, um, and that again goes with the project, is it's very, very modular. Um, so even if we get only, and I put this in quotation mark, uh, 500,000 euros, for example, which is a lot of money, definitely. Um, but if we only raise that amount, then we simply build one power plant. And that's it. Um, but the investors in of those 500,000 euros or million euros, um, they get their dividend from day one. Um, mm -hmm. And they get it for the next 30 years. So the project is yeah. pretty much finished. It's, it's running. However, yeah. we, can, we can now start the second funding round, raise another 1 million, build yeah. electricity power plants, and the second investors now get dividends from day one. Then we can do a third round, and a fourth round, and a fifth round. We can stop at any time. The projects that we have already built are running, and they will be yeah. running for the next 30, 40 years. And if we decide to do even more projects, we can do that. Um, and that's why it's, so the project itself is very modular and open-ended. We can mm -hmm. grow like infinitely. There's unlimited demand for energy. Um, of course, there are some scaling problems, but like theoretically infinite. Um, and yeah. that's why I think the timeline itself um, can be like open-ended because the entire project yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, do you have an idea about what's the like, uh points in the timeline like um in yeah detail, we, um i have something uh, wait I'll, I'll share my screen in a second okay can you see the screen oh, great. yeah great so should have prepared that beforehand but doesn't matter here it is roadmap um I actually need to add quarter four uh, of 2017 because that's when the project started. Um, and again, it's a work in progress. Uh, we, we still need to hatch mm -hmm. it out and, and make sure that everything works. Um, 
But for quarter one, it's basically just getting everything ready from a design standpoint, from the white paper standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just starting building the community, getting feedback, um, and improving the basic idea. Um, mm -hmm. Like token economics, um, how exactly will the, uh, the voting system work, um, and all the details here, uh, that's like the next thing to do. Um, quarter two okay. will, oh, sorry. Yeah, any questions? No, no, I said nice. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so quarter two, we'll, uh, we will then do a first uh, photovoltaic power plant MVP, minimum viable product. I think, uh, again, that's debatable, but I think the best way to go forward is doing the first round full equity. Um, so that just, uh, you know, a um, small amount of, of uh, investors that are already familiar with the project um, do the first initial funding round of, let's say, 200 to 500,000 euros, just to make sure that everything is working, just to make sure that we actually can perform um, mm -hmm. and that we can build the energy and uh, the PV plants and stuff like that. Um, so I think equity is here a good way to go because, you know, as soon as you start taking on other people's money, it gets really, really risky uh, and we want to be careful here. Um, so I would much rather lose my own money than lose someone else's. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that's why equity funding, at least for the first round, is, is quite nice. Um, and then we can also start testing this whole smart grid reg registry, um, which just means, you know, uh, in the community um, registry and trading of the energy um, so that you don't have to sell it back to the utility, which is quite nice. Um, mm -hmm. We also want to have a real-time cloud net metering up there. Um, this means if you are a contributor and a token holder or just anyone, um, you can go to our website um, and get a feed of which PV panel is producing how much energy in almost real time. It has like five minutes delay. Um, and this just means that you can check on the projects yourself. You can see if everything is working. Um, and yeah, just make sure that it's not a scam. <laughs> um, yeah. We, we are also looking into doing debt financing uh, with a bank. Um, it just makes sense. Uh, photovoltaic power plant, you have steady cash flow for 30, 40 years. Uh, mm -hmm. You would be quite stupid doing that full equity. Uh, it's just too expensive. Um, mm -hmm. We're already working uh, with a couple banks um, on yeah, doing that. But again, you know, uh, a ICO, a token sale, it's, uh, it's new technology and uh, we'll need a very progressive thinking bank of actually giving us uh, debt financing in this project. Um, so it's not going to be easy, but um, I'm quite positive that we can do something. Um, yeah. We also need to have the token uh, ready and, and all the development on the blockchain end side. Uh, that is something uh, up and coming. And I think we can have the first funding, public funding round uh, in quarter two as well. But yeah, um, I mean, I mean they're, well, they're, I have a question. Um, uh, this is the first time I hear about the organization of debt, debt financing. Is this like uh, locking up your tokens to secure a fiat loan or like what SALT and uh, FLAND are doing? Oh, wait, um, wait, FLAND, I, I don't think are doing that yet, but SALT is doing that. Yeah, um, so it, it depends. I mean, so what I'm thinking is that the funds that we raise with the token sale, it's pretty much just like equity in the company. Um, and it's quite stupid to do a, a cash flow heavy project like photovoltaic energy, full equity, um, just because equity is more expensive than debt capital. Uh, that's just how it is. That's normal. Um, and you can leverage your earnings um, and the earnings of your investors if you take on debt financing um, that you then repay with this steady cash flow. Because, you know, even if we say, okay, we uh, only uh, use 20 or we use 20% of the funds needed to invest um, and we use those with equity financing from the token sale, the other 80% um, can be uh, done with a debt financing but we know how much energy the uh, PV plant will produce. We know how much that is worth. We know how high our cash flow will be. And if the cash flow is high enough to cover the debt repayment and the interest payment, um, it can be much more lucrative. Um, again, that is something we have to look into. There are some progressive banks uh, that 
I personally know are interested in doing something like this. Um, like crowdfunding banks, uh, there are a couple in Germany that, that I'm familiar with and that we're in contact with. Um, again, we haven't discussed the token sale in detail, so there, it's, it's still just something that we can do. Um, but they're definitely interested, and just from a financial point of view, it makes absolute sense. You're, you're like losing a lot of money if you don't do it. Well, how, how would we use those funds then? Okay, let, let's say the a, a PV plant costs us 1 million euros. Um, and let's say we use 400,000 euros equity financing that we raise in a token sale. The other 600,000 euros, we go to the bank and say, hey, look at this. We have already 400,000 euros in equity. We want to finance this PV project. This brings us steady cash flows for the next 40 years. The cash flows will be this and this, inflation adjusted, price adjusted, um, if, if efficiency of the PV plants adjusted. So we can calculate all this pretty much down to the cent. Uh, it, it's quite nice to calculate. Um, and now we can say, okay, do you want to front run us the available 600,000 euros? So you give us money now uh, in exchange for uh, future cash flows, um, where we will of course pay interest. Um, I mean, I've, I've, or we've been doing photovoltaic project for, for, for a while now, and we are, so we could get a 120% leverage, um, which just means if the photovoltaic power plant costs 1 million euro, we get that financing for 1.2 million euros. Just mm -hmm. because it's such a great project for banks, um, it's pretty much guaranteed cash flow for them. Uh, they, there's low risk involved. And again, you can calculate it quite nicely. Um, however, again, uh, ICOs and token sales in general are new. And because banks are heavily, heavily regulated, there might be a lot of problems here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. But let's, let's just follow, follow the, for this point, yeah. let's just assume that we have a bank that is interested in doing this. And, and I mean, there are banks that do crowdfunding and I think token sales are just another form of crowdfunding. Um, and I'm definitely quite certain that we can find a partner here. Uh, but of course, you know, it depends on the conditions and, and stuff like that. We can do it full equity, no problem, but it just doesn't make that much sense. No, I mean, we, we need to go to the, the most efficient way for, for the token yeah. hold, token holders sake. I mean, uh, let's say that we use that uh, leverage in leverage to cover our expenses, cover the, cover the costs of building the plants, then we can channel more profits from the actual plants to the token holders. Yeah, yeah. And, so and the, the, the effect is drastic. So if, if, let's say, if we do a full equity financing, the project will gather for the equity financiers, they will get roughly 5 to 6% return on their interest. If we do a debt financing with that and we leverage the, this up, they can get 15, 16, 17% per year. Um, mm. So, I mean, that's, that's the leverage effect. If your um, total interest payment on both equity and uh, debt financing is larger than the debt financing interest rate itself, you make a net profit. That's, that's how that's it works. Oh, and as you can see, this is why we have people from different fields in the project, because uh, we need to consider all this kind of thing. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. That's I like that. So, Hen, do you um, do you have some questions about the, your part in the project? Um, How would you like to contribute? I probably would have more when I would start working on it, but for now, I understand pretty good, like all the levels and all the infographics I need to make for the first level, and. Like the video, it's like uh, the next step, right? After we finish all the infographics and the page one. Yeah. 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 And I mean, the video is pretty much what we have discussed in this hour long call, uh, just condensed in one minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. easy. So, but yeah. It's, yeah. Basically, it's to sum summarize this on the one pager. Uh, so I think the logical way, like you said, is to go about make the one pager, make the infographics, make the one pager. And, you know, we haven't discussed the, the look of the one pager itself. You're welcome to do whatever you want with it. Um, we, I think we can all trust that you will do a good job on that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, basically that's what we should build. Um, make a, some kind of a proposal or idea and don't, don't be shy, like don't be uh, afraid to use like unconventional methods and be a little bit crazy, we like that. 
and uh, yeah, <laughs> the, bring us some ideas and let's have another call and take it from there. Great. So this one page, I like, go to people uh, like you're going to show this to people that uh, for raising uh, money to start the project, right? Like this is the yeah, main goal of the pager. It's, it's just like the first introduction. Uh, so this one yeah. pager will be on our website. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. push it on like emails and other social media channels. So if people want to know, okay, what, what is this project actually? We just want to have this one page quick summary. Those are the mm -hmm. straight facts. It's quite easy to understand on, on this one page. If you're interested, then here's a white paper, which is like 30 pages, 40 pages of the stuff, um, goes into much more details. Um, and if you're still interested after that, we have much more material. Um, so it's, it's just this like uh, teaser, uh, the, the appetizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, teaser is the right word. And, and yeah, while the investors are a very important part uh, we want to reach with this. We also want to make this introduction to pe uh, talented people like yourself to let them know right away, right off the, off the bat, what the project is and what we're trying to achieve here without going yeah. into too much technical details. I mean, everybody should have time to read a one pager. It takes like, what, 15 minutes of your time. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a, a small investment and you can learn something uh, really cool in that time. Mm hmm. Uh, I saw the website also. So <laughs> did, 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 did you see the one that I made with Muse, like the NX Solar? <laughs> it was like we basically has <laughs> a link to our Telegram. Yeah, that's not really our website. It's just I just put it there as a placeholder in case somebody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, this one. <laughs> In case it's, somebody, it's, it's know, almost we are we are sharing our emails with which does have the NX solar. So somebody might just go, we're not this is not published, obviously, but we um, might just take the initiative and go and check it out. So we don't want it to come to an error message. So I just whipped that up. But uh, if you have any ideas, if you feel like up to it, please, please uh, help us make it better. And, 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 uh, hey, while you're at it, I think it will be okay to let Hen have a look at the actual beta website. Yeah, I was about to say that we do have a beta. Um, it's you know it's quite nice, still a work in progress. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, Nico can provide you with the link. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, and um, so I mean, we talked earlier that we're this kind of like open source voluntary organization. Um, if if you want to join, if you want to contribute. Please, really, we, we need all the help we can get. Uh, if, if, if you want to, sure. Um, if, if you don't have time, if you think it's a stupid project, if you don't like us, uh, it's okay as well. You can leave, no, no obligation at all. Um, and th the, the nice thing is that you can contribute as much as you want. Um, so if you want to go full crazy and go like Nico and work like 26 hours a day, you can do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if, if, if you have other stuff to do, um, some of us, or I think most of us, have a full-time job. Um, so mm -hmm. 